Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome to Muslima Insight with me, your host, Adila Amot, for the next hour or so. In this program, Muslima Insight, I'm sure as you have seen in the opening sequence, we are going to once again look at self-discovery, personal development and life transformation as you have first seen it in my series called Life Transformation in 2006. However, this time we are going to embark on this journey a little bit further, but with a different approach, taking a different stance in that, that we are going to invite people and um, members from our respective communities to come and join us on set and, we're going to sh and they're going to share with us their experiences, their wisdom and their insight so that we can all grow and learn together from each other. With me in studio today, I've got two very prominent community workers, people that build our societies, that positively contribute to the betterment of society. But before I introduce them, I'm just going to briefly say that our topic today is we're going to look at the effects of apartheid, what it has done to our psyche, our self-esteem, our self-concept, and how we live that out on a daily basis. Coming to my guests, on my left, I've got the beautiful sister Suraya Bibi Khan, all the way from Lanasia, a mother, a wife, as well as political activist, and like I said, a very strong and person that contributes to the betterment of society. Assalamu alaikum and welcome, sister. Wa alaikum salam. Thanks for having me. Next to her, I've got um, brother A.K. Kurta from, right. from Erasmia in Pretoria. Um, he's uh, a well-known face also here on ITV and um, also very much involved at the Al-Ghazali um, Masjid and Community Centre that is once again there building and contributing to the betterment of society. Assalamu alaikum. Wa well, alaikum as salam. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Shukran. Si. Like I've said in my opening statements, we are going to look at the effects of apartheid. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that it was a, a, a political monstrosity that was imposed on people, it marginalised them, it um, affected the social, social lives, the economics of those people. Those were, if I say that, it sounds very global, it sounds very out there. However, we have to take it into our homes, take it into our beings. What has it done to us? Mm -hmm. And this is what I want people to start becoming aware of. Um, can you share with, with our viewers, what are some of the experiences that you have come across at grassroot level working with people where you can clearly recognize the reality of the symptom, how they have inculcated that apartheid mentality into their lives. Sister, I think yeah. ladies first, so oh, uh, maybe yeah, Sister Khan should, <laughs> should go on first. May I just quickly say a, a short dua? Oh, ya Allah, guide my tongue and my thoughts for anything I say or think, not to harm anyone, but for the simplest truth, the truth, justice, and peace is required from all of us. I think if one really goes back, um, there are times when one sits and one wants to cry because you see the effects on society. It's in, it's in our homes. It's in our families. We've adopted, we've made it our own. We've made apartheid something that is part of our being. Mm. And it's sad for me because I wasn't brought up in that way. I didn't know what apartheid was until my teens and until I got married. Mm -hmm. Then I saw the world in a different way. Because, you know, when you're younger, you're sort of playful and childish and, mm -hmm. and, and you don't look at things in that way. So I didn't know. Would you say your parents um, broad, very, very broad-minded, broad but also protective, so protective that you don't... In the sense of we, were in, we lived in Sophia Town, the removals mm -hmm. came after I was born, my brother was born, and we ended up going to live in Everton. Mm -hmm. And I lived across the road from Mrs. Mulifi, mm -hmm. Mrs. Johnson next to me, Gorko, Jabu, Petros, and those were my childhood friends. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I still find I'm much more comfortable mm -hmm. in a society where it's African children, because I am African. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, that is how I regard myself. Okay, I maybe sometimes go a little out of order and mm. say, you know, I'm such a thoroughbred, half-caste, mixed breed. Mm -hmm. But that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Because I am mixed. I'm from so many different nations and tribes. I'm international. You see, I'm not regional. I'm international. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm a thoroughbred human being. And that are. is important for me. Mm -hmm. So I work in the political sphere in a sense to bring about change. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been easy. Of course. 
20 years, 25 years, ugh, it's still going to take us a long time. Mm. But in programs like this, we need to start, and especially you know, using the tool of media, we hope to start reaching more people quicker, sooner. Mm -hmm. The shift has to happen. Because if we want to embark on this journey to reach a place of self-actualization, it starts with self. It starts with work of the yeah, self brother. I guess it's a question of suppressed emotions. Mm -hmm. I, and also, uh, as we come along, look, we are apartheid children. Mm -hmm. We grew up uh, experiencing firsthand yes. the evils and the cruelty of apartheid. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I guess, and because of our different uh, forms of, of, of struggle against that evil system, we accumulate a lot of experiences. We, and when we come across now to the so-called era where uh, the democratic era, we come with a lot of baggage. Mm -hmm. Th that is a given. Sure. Uh, life's experiences gives you that baggage. The idea is to jettison it, to throw it away, mm -hmm. but not to, to forget to take the wisdom out of to it. To take the wisdom, the good out of that. Right. Now, as I said, apartheid was a cruel and evil system akin to, to, the, to, to the Nazis mm -hmm. uh, during the Holocaust, the Jewish uh, people and, and, and many others, uh, the gypsies and Russians and God knows who. Mm -hmm. Millions of people experienced this firsthand because it was uh, the, the so-called Aryan race, uh, the race of superiority mm -hmm. over others, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, similarly, Apartheid uh, had that same uh, mindset, that, yeah. that, that thought that comes with it, True. that the white man or the white race is superior to the black. Exactly. And they want to come and enforce yes. their culture, their way. Yeah. And who said this is what is best? Who yeah. says anybody wants that? And unfortunately, uh, and today we see this in Palestine, yeah. where the Zionist uh, Jewish race uh, has the same mentality mm -hmm. where they regard the uh, Palestinians as, as inferior, mm. you know, mm. and they justify it through biblical uh, text, yeah. uh, which is, I mean, makes me doubt the Bible. But that's another story for another time. Of course. However, the, the point is that we've come with all this baggage. Mm -hmm. that, and, and unfortunately, you see, we, the, the children of apartheid, the Yeah, the recept said yeah, we receive this. We now try as you as you as you might try as uh, to, to the best of your ability mm -hmm. you still have it in you mm -hmm. in your system mm -hmm. so you need to suppress it and to cleanse yourself mm -hmm. now unfortunately we pass this 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 uh, mindset over to our children yeah. and it is so evident in our societies mm -hmm. not that we I, I wouldn't generalize to say that all whites were racist, and, and because of that, because of the different stages, Indians became racist, mm -hmm. coloreds were racist, and then we looked down on the black. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's, it's not really like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, however you do, we do seem to judge people mm -hmm. on the color of the skin yes. or the texture mm -hmm. of the hair. Unfortunately, yes. it's, it's prevalent. Mm -hmm. Like, to, just to give you, to simplify what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say, uh, if my daughter were to come in, mm -hmm and say, you know what, uh, meet uh, Shabalala. Mm -hmm. uh, he's my, uh, I, I want to get married to him. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is my reaction to that? Mm -hmm. A culture shock? Uh, uh, my racism will come to the fore? Mm -hmm. uh, he's not our type? Mm -hmm. Though I must tell you, my family is totally mixed. Mm -hmm. It's totally mixed. Yeah. My wife is from a non-Muslim background, uh, belonging to the so-called colored race. Mm -hmm. I have a, my, my, my niece, is married to uh, uh, a very dark person because I'm emphasizing color now. Yeah, yeah we are she talking in about Australia. Mm -hmm. She's uh, as light as you, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to make uh, mm -hmm. simplify things. Mm -hmm. He's from Ghana, mm -hmm. so I have a very mixed uh, 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 family. Mm -hmm. And al Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah daily for that. These are reminders to us that Absolutely. actually one should not look. And he's a wonderful human being, yeah. so we shouldn't look at race. Or color, color or ethnic group mm. because there's the if you're a muslim if you call yourself a muslim mm. this is what you do you judge a person by his his character his piety, piety. and and other facets but unfortunately because of our baggage we we, we seem to judge people according mm. to race and ethnic groups mm. to just a, sh a quick you know mm. someone shared with me at a school that there's a problem in the school and the teachers are saying that the Parents give the children the two C's, they don't give them the most important C's. So I thought, 
A A B C D E F Vavi di concert. So she says no 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 it's a question of the C the cell phone uh-huh. and the cash. Mm. But they do not give the child the character. Yeah. The most important C. The most important C. And if we look at our global society yeah. internationally and on this continent particularly mm-hmm. we have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. I have I was going I, I went to um Kenya mm-hmm. and I had to I was exposed to the the any of peace support operations training that was going on and you realize even women that I met from Sudan mm-hmm. they also had a problem with my color hmm. South Sudan women mm-hmm. that came for training it's a global on the ego. phenomenon they it's had a serious problem with my training because they felt I was too fair I am not African but you know you know one of our ladies that went with me she's dark mm-hmm. they approached her mm-hmm. and she was fine she was fine with them because she said it's it's uh it's okay mm-hmm. but they thought she's muslim mm-hmm. but i am looking like the arabs that have also racism in them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's a lot of racism there as well yes mm-hmm. and therefore they do not admit that Shukran, uh, brother and sister. I'm sure these comments are really making our viewers think about what we're busy discussing because it's an issue that is close to the heart. And inshallah, we will continue with this after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. In today's program, we are looking at the effects of apartheid on our psyche, our self-esteem, self-concept, and how we have inculcated the apartheid mentality into our daily lives. With me in studio, I've got Brother AK from Erasmia, as well as Sister Suraya Bibi Khan from Lanasia. And before the break, we were talking about some of the experiences, some of the things that we have witnessed, both in our own homes in our own country as well as globally and to continue this discussion i would like to come in there and just share an experience that happened to me when i came into the indian muslim society and um it happened about 17 to 18 years ago and that was where the seed was planted in me and it struck a chord because I also did not grow I obviously grew up in a white africana home I was very much protected from all this mm-hmm. but alhamdulillah from a background where my parents had a lot of empathy a lot of love for all races mm-hmm. and shukr it really made a difference in how I then saw the world but coming back when I came into the society after a couple of years of being married I was exposed to where a mom scolded her child for going into the sun without putting sunblock but what hurt me is the comments not protect yourself the sun the uv rays is high yeah. it can you know give the child a reasonable explanation mm-hmm. it was the remarks mm-hmm. that you're going to get too dark mm-hmm. and you might look like an indian uh, you, you know and it is i, yeah. I was yeah. i was hurt for the child's sake yeah. because from baby mm-hmm. we teach the child who how and who Allah Ta'ala created you as is not good enough. Mm-hmm. And I mean it robs the the person from that sense of self-worth. You know sister Adila to be quite honest with you we have this uh, it might be uh, excuses that we are looking for and groping for sure. but we have this demons where we have to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Uh speaking for myself uh definitely apartheid had an influence mm-hmm. as to how I I I judge other people mm-hmm. okay? Or, or, or gen- to generalize the, the Indian community judges, I had a little bit of a different background. Mm-hmm. I believe that uh, though my wife sometimes does accuse me of being a racist, but I, I don't believe I am. But nevertheless, mm-hmm. that's another story. Uh, also, the Indian Muslim unfortunately comes with cultural baggage mm-hmm. from India. Okay. So this seems to be passed on from generation to generation. Just to give you an example, uh, I'm currently dealing with. Uh, Uh, a, a youngster uh, unfortunately he's uh, been involved in, in uh, uh, abusing drugs mm-hmm. um, is, so we've sent him to a rehabil- uh, rehabilitation uh, uh, institution mm-hmm. the 
And after counseling him and having a lengthy discussion with him, one thing came to the fore. Unfortunately, now because he's an adopted child, and if you see him, you'll say, okay, this is a colored child. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But with an Indian family, mm-hmm. a thoroughbred Indian family with long flowing uh, hair and what have you, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semi light complexion. And he's a colored child, light in complexion, but his hair is wavy and what have you. You'll identify him as belonging to, if you want to place him in a, ra- a racial box as mm-hmm. a colored child. But he was ridiculed at school sure. by his uh, fellow learners, fellow pupils, as mm-hmm. you're a bushy. Mm-hmm. And you know, these so they, terms, they, they is grow what up with this. Person. They break you now. And and what was his recourse to seek that uh, solution or, or refuge? Mm. Drugs, unfortunately. Yeah. Now this came out to the fore, and this is not the first. This is about the third case that I was dealing with that had a similar type of of, of mm. problem. So this is prevalent in our communities. Mm. We need to go back to Quran, Sister Khan. I don't know if you agree with me. We need to read, open that book, this noble book, and understand it. Yeah. You know. And, and I think that might lead us. And of course, Definitely. what is lacking, I don't know if you agree with me, mm. is from the member, from the masjids, our leadership, our ulama are not talking of these issues. And it's I think they need so to be prevalent. Keen, It's so necessary. Yes. Because, you know, not just the masjid, if you, ta- if you go to the schools, yes. um, the psychological training that the educators need to have um, so that, and it's not just the, the, the molanas and the, our yeah. ulama, it's from, all guilty of this. Basically. We're all guilty of it, and we all can make a difference. Adela, we really have to. Adela, you know what? If I, if I take my background, right? And I was, as I was driving here, I was thinking of my father comes of the age of Madiba's age, you know. Mm-hmm. And they had a particular way of dealing with things, right? Because that time there was no apartheid mm-hmm. when they were growing up. They didn't bring, break, grow up with that mentality. Mm-hmm. And that's why they fought so vociferously mm-hmm. against the forced removals from Sophia time. Yes. So I come from a parents that had no understanding of apartheid, but mm-hmm. were forced into thinking in apartheid strategies. Mm-hmm. And, and my father took us to a place so that I could grow up not knowing anything. Mm-hmm. N- uh, growing up in, in an environment where we were mixed. And where you loved yourself. And I, you played, with, I, you I played with mm-hmm. everyone and I didn't know there was a difference. The like threat I said. was always hanging there, unfortunately. Yeah, but I didn't know it. And we were protected somewhat yeah. by so our parents not and know. the innocence of childhood. Yeah. We were protected. And, and, and alhamdulillah, it. because yeah. of that, I find it very difficult to, to, to engage with, with someone when I feel this not being judgmental mm. is this leaning towards racism yeah. or what is there we is question there a, it all the time the mm. question is there but you need you know i i'm i was so surprised mm. one of my neighbors came he says bibi can you remember my son i said yes she mm. said he says it's the lady that works for me in mm-hmm. in my home her son mm. and he went to school and I, I don't know what to do so i said why what happened he says he went to school and the children were talking to him and he came back and he said, he calls me daddy yeah. because I'm, I'm the father in the house. And yeah. he says, look at these guys. Look how they're behaving. We Indians don't behave. Yeah. And he's an African child. Yeah. <laughs> and he regards himself as Indian yes. because he comes from an environment yeah. and he grew up in that yeah. home. Mm. So the home life is very important. Mm-hmm. Now, if you, have, yeah. if you have women who are not allowed to learn mm. because... That also comes through. Women shouldn't learn. They shouldn't be educated. What if you? So you will have children that mm-hmm. are uneducated True. and go into things where the parents don't know how to deal with the drug mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. And you'll also find, and this I must say on camera, because someone who was an addict told me very clearly, Auntie Bibi, I'm so scared to go into court today mm. because I'm a, I'm, I was an addict. Mm. And we lie. Mm. We lie a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's it's something that and that's another illness. That it's an illness. Mm-hmm. So you sort of deal with societal issues, mm-hmm. and we want to place blame. Mm-hmm. No? Mm-hmm. Some of it must blame come clearly to us when we don't take the Quran and yeah. open it. Yes. Yeah. When we don't want to understand, mm-hmm. because it's easier for us to remain ignorant. Mm. True. It is an excuse. Yeah. The ulama, the nobody can stop me from opening their Quran and studying it. They no, can no. come with their no, stories. No, it's your right. It's your right. It's my right. No, no, it is no. my right to learn and to learn from the cradle to the grave, mm. to go as far as I can to learn and understand. Absolutely. And what it is, is about learning about human nature. Yeah. The, the thing human is, behavior. I agree with what you are saying. Mm. I think what we just need to keep 
in the back of our minds, if a child is conditioned mm. with a great negativity, yes. by, the child, by the time the child is an adult, they are not going to very easily start looking at guidances because they are so broken. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and it's all part of that um, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs that we need to satisfy one level to the next to the next. And uh, the other thing that I, I just want to bring in here, uh, because I had a discussion quite recently with a group of ladies, where the one was, in fact, from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, if you have a tan skin, you are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. If you are pale, you are sick. What's wrong with you? Go to the doctor. <laughs> Go have yourself checked. Yes. Where in China, it's again the exact Definitely. opposite of that. Yeah. So there is also those cultural standards of what is regarded as... And it's again stigmatization. If mm -hmm. we go to the Quran, our answers are there. there. You know, but the thing is, we need to, as adults, look today and say, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. This is where it should start. Mm -hmm. But what are we facing now in our communities? We've got people reaching out to drugs, yeah. all kinds of things, because they're not dealing with that sense of unworthiness. I, I think we need to go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. The innocence of childhood. Because Islam believes that every child Children. born is totally yes. innocent, exactly. as yes. opposed to Christianity where you're born in sin. Yes. That's yeah. a different story. Yes. Yes. Okay? Exactly. So we need to start there. That's the starting point. Mm -hmm. And Speaking for myself, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this experience mm -hmm. where I've experienced the nasty vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis apartheid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then being in a moment of denial and then realizing that, listen, I need to come clean. So yes. cleaning oneself, mm -hmm. but learning from the difficulties of that era yeah. and then ensuring that, listen, you now need to be a new human being, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to see things differently, to judge people according to their to their stature mm -hmm. of, of character yes. mm -hmm. and not of color. Mm -hmm. and, so I think this attitude. is important. It mm -hmm. comes down to attitude. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And We're therefore, gonna... we have to, to look at the question of our attitudes. Absolutely. We're going to carry on with this after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. Before the break, we were looking at the various things that we can start doing to start changing this that we have identified previously in the discussion, the effects of apartheid and what it has done to us. Brother, before the break, you, you were touching on something, and I just want to make sure I understand you correctly. Uh, if we think of the sense of Madiba, mm -hmm. where after the elections, he came in, etc., and he still united the nation through the, the World Cup, the rugby match that was played, mm -hmm. and he, they kept the logo, they kept the jersey, they kept the colors, all stuff that we should learn from. Yeah. Because effectively, what I heard you say is you ha uh, the people of different colors that have lived through the apartheid has, that has been hurt by it, come with this baggage. Mm -hmm. But now, the, what I see, the wisdom, because any person that suffers through difficulty, that have a difficult life, normally comes out more intelligent on the other side, because they have to employ resources and abilities from within to overcome that, mm -hmm. to get through it. And if they can extract the wisdom out of that, and I mean, Allah Ta'ala, through earth school, through all the different life experiences, we're here to learn mm -hmm. so that we can, because when we say, when I know myself, I will know my Lord, and he has breathed of his spirit into us. So certain of those attributes of forgiveness, of worthiness, of self-love, self-respect, mm -hmm. when what I understand is if we can get that back into us and we can embark on that journey as the bigger person as how Madiba was, mm -hmm. he was the bigger person from everything that they have done to him, he said, I forgive. I, I, I think. I mean, that's huge. And this is what we need, to, we, yeah. we need to raise to that place where we're the bigger person and we say, let's learn from this. I think uh, uh, the late great uh, Madiba was a uh, embodiment of the attributes that you just mentioned, okay. uh, the, of forgiveness, of embracing each other, mm -hmm. looking beyond the, the, the skin color, mm -hmm. you know, 
rather looking at the human being of 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 acknowledging diversity mm -hmm. but at the same time unifying mm -hmm. so this was a great human being of course. and of course we can learn huge lessons from uh, this this great uh, personality that unfortunately has passed away mm -hmm. but i believe he's done his job mm -hmm. you know and now it's up to us to to we sort of complete to. maybe what he started yes. he was a living example it's very difficult yes. to do i must tell you mm -hmm. more so because of our reluctance to let go of the baggage. Yes. If you still want to, it, the choice is ours. That's it. Do you still a, want to look uh, in the past mm -hmm. uh, with all the the, the uh, unnecessary baggage, mm -hmm. and and do and you want to, to to grow to, in, to 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 grow into you to become toxic mm -hmm. so that you become an ugly human being, mm -hmm. or do you go to the examples of people like Madiba, of course, the greatest living uh, example to us Muslims was Nabi Muhammad so sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, the true great forgiving spirit. Okay. I mean, when he conquered Mecca, these are classical examples, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think Madiba embodied the, the, the personality of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. If I may say so, this is my opinion, of mm. course. In, in our lifetime, for us to have an example in yes. that sense yes. that we can relate to in today's time, but yes. of course. Our guidance, first and foremost, is from the Quran. Yes. Um, I mean, if we take uh, Surah 49, verse 13, we, we, it clearly says, I, I've created you in different tribes and yes. nations yes. that you may know one another. Variety is a Vari spice of life. We need to get to know yes. each other. Yes. Um, you know, not that we, dis we must despise not despise other, and yeah. look down. Yeah. Yeah. And now, what was apartheid? Mm -hmm. To not to know one another, to not divide, to, one, yeah. to divide, to divide yes. because I mean we live together in Sufaita, mm. and then the races were all divided, mm. and mm. old people will still tell you mm -hmm. there was great mm -hmm. artists that came from that time. Mm -hmm. You know there was lots of songs. I mean I don't want to sit, start singing my mm. my struggle songs yet, <laughs> but I mean they're when beautiful the songs. dancing up? No, I've never <laughs> done that yet. I, I I don't think I'll ever. My father would have beat my legs <laughs> under me out for for thinking of dancing, but. We used to toy toy and things yes. like mm -hmm. that, you know. Mm -hmm. There's the, a lot of beautiful it songs was a great, that came. Great way to keep foot, mind you. And it was that diversity that was alive. People were learning, sharing mm. from one another, True. and I think that was the fear. Yeah. Yes, the fear of integration. I mean, in mm. our family, yes. we have family members that were when apartheid came into being, the family would be called and said, "Well, you can have a choice." Um, mm -hmm. You can either be white or you can be whatever you want to, mm -hmm. but you, one of the fr one of the family members, you can't be. You can just be coloured, mm -hmm. because the pencil won't fall through your ear. You know, so the pencil mm -hmm. stuck, sure. and one child was mm -hmm. told, and the rest of the family said, then we'll all be coloured. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so my my idea in those days was other coloured because Cape mm -hmm. Malay kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. other coloured. No, no, there were a lot of seed stories. Very sad. Can, uh, very hurtful. Yeah. It's, it's Trichem elections. Yeah. elections. I mean, we were so scared. Oh, we were going to have to pay a fine for not registering yes. to vote and whatever. Yeah, you were so threatened somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. sister and I nicely go and register and whatever. And I've still got the letter mm -hmm. that says, You are in the wrong area. Yeah. You shouldn't register. Yeah. <laughs> you could only vote in, in clips. <laughs> in clips so yeah. I said, but I'm not going to pay It was fine. absurd, basically. Mm. You know? But mm. it was mm. that of human beings saying one is better and superior to another. Who yeah. gives you that what right? What arrogance. Yeah, Who true. gives arrogance. you that right? Mm. So it comes down to family as well. Mm. We sometimes we, as women and as families, don't see what we do to children. So when it comes to conditioning, mm -hmm. I make sure my son said to me the other day, I, said, I was so angry at an, an incident that took place. It's not an incident, it's a sickness that took place in Lens. And I said, the Indians, I said, mommy, mommy's using the wrong words. No, mommy can't say it's all the Indians. Mm. I said, why? He says, because there's good and bad in all. It's not just the Indians that are doing this that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the, the it's among it's mummy and them, mummy skulls as well, also doing this. And yeah. It's in the whites. It's all over. It's all over. The disease, it's, it's a disease mm -hmm. that's in our society, mm -hmm. and it becomes important for each and every one to pick up and say, I'm going to do something. I'm in taking my street. Mm -hmm. In my neighborhood, yes. who's, who's hungry? Mm -hmm. What are we duty-bound as Muslims? That's Quran it. tells us yeah. very clearly mm -hmm. how we are supposed to conduct ourselves. Exactly. And that's why when, when this person says, oh, no, Vazit, Muhammad was the most successful of all religious personalities. 
Muhammad Sallallahu was the soul of kindness and his influence was felt and never forgotten by mm -hmm. those around him. Mm -hmm. We preach mm -hmm. Nabi Sallallahu mm -hmm. We won't We won't use the name of our Nabi without Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him. Yeah. We want to show that reverence. We stand up mm. and, and we do salam. And with honor. But in our conduct, yeah, are we living Allah. it? It's the opposite. That's the opposite. The and it conduct. boils down to personal responsibility. Yes. And we are all guilty of this, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not that we we casting stones at others. Exactly. Mm. But we all we all need to remind ourselves yeah. uh, time and again that listen, are we? Uh, uh, performing according to, to the standards of Islam. Of that's being. it. You know, that, that we is need to our, check our ourselves. Problem. But this is where the African society yes. is still rich. Yes. They remind one another. Mm. Yes. The that child is raised by the village, yes. not by the family. And it's we a take person. responsibility. Yes, yes, yes. Now you go and do it. I go to the police station. They'll yes. say to me, Auntie Bibi, stay here till one o'clock. Yeah. Years ago, I said, why? They say you sit here till one yeah. past midnight, then you'll see what happens. Yeah. We picked up all these children with drugs. Yeah. Look at how the mummies are going to come mm. in and shout and swear us. Yes. And these sure. are our police officers, and you must see their dignity being stripped mm. by mm. our people that mm. go in there and Where no can't be my child. It's not Where? my child. Absent parents, misguided uh, teachings, so unfortunately. You know, the, the thing is, if, okay. if, if you are a warped mirror because of your conditioning, mm -hmm. if you are not going to straighten up and mm -hmm. shape up, you're going to raise a warped mirror. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility for us as adults that are now speaking about it, we mm -hmm. are aware of it. Uh, you know, fearful aware awareness is mm -hmm. um, the lamp by which the believer cleanses his heart. So we need to start mm -hmm. seeing what we can do to start changing. Yeah. If, I, if I may ask, because you're a male, when Allah Ta'ala says... That's quite obvious, to, is it? Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, okay. Janet beneath the mother's feet. Yes. Do they take it as an honor as women or do they take the serious responsibility that lies with it? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. Because we have taken it as just an honor. You read more and more yeah, later. And, and, yeah. and force your respect yeah. on, and, and on trophy wife you. or you want to yeah. be, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You don't take that responsibility no, 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 you, serious. Got You've, mm. got You've got to earn, earn it. Yes. And, and parents need to earn respect from their children. Yes. Children are looking at parents and the things that you see children doing, and they'll turn around and say, but I saw my mum and did, did it, mm -hmm. so what, what's wrong with it? Mm. Because my parents are doing it. Drug dealers' children will say they, they support their parents. Mm -hmm. The one child even made the statement that she wants to take up law. And why would you want to take up law? No, because I want to defend my parents. They're drug dealers. Mm -hmm. sure. The child the says this. Yeah. In a society, what is society's role and mm -hmm. view in that? Mm -hmm. You're scared? You're scared of a drug mm -hmm. dealer? Who's going to murder a lot of people in a community where we have so much in relation to going for us when it comes to law? Mm -hmm. Constitutional, my responsibility, mm -hmm. my business. Absolutely. Uh, I think the key word here is responsibility. Parents yeah. need to take responsibility. Children need to take Personal, responsibility. Personal, individual mm -hmm. responsibility. Yeah. We have to live yeah. up to that. Once again, it's time for us to go to a break. Don't go away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslimah Insight. Before the break, we were now, we moved further in our conversation on the effects of apartheid on our psyche, what it has done into our societies, our communities, and into us as individuals. And coming now to this segment of the program, I really want us to look at, we have discussed the fact that we need to take personal responsibility. What is out there that we can start working towards solutions? Obviously, it's going to be a personal, individual mm -hmm. choice and journey that you have to take. You're going to have to stretch over this um, conditioning of the nafs, the conditioning of the ego. But we all can do it. We all have the ability because that is part of why Allah Ta'ala has put us here so that we can evolve to that higher level where mm -hmm. we can be the bigger person. What are some of the solutions that is in society? <coughs> Auntie Israel, that you can that you can guide us to. I'm so used to Auntie Bibi. But yeah, Auntie Bibi. Okay. okay. <laughs> How do you learn? No, that's fine. You know, we started in 2003. We oh. started the dialogue, yes. and that's when we started ensuring that it the group and the dialogue 
when it takes place, must be diverse. Mm -hmm. So you must have people with disabilities, you must people have their own orientation, mm -hmm. different races, must, and it's difficult mm -hmm. because the areas are spread far. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we get together with all the different faiths as well. Mm -hmm. It must be diverse mm -hmm. because in our preamble of our constitution, united in our diversity, so Sawid has adopted that. From 2003 up to last year, we did an evaluation. For the viewers that don't know SAWED, can oh, you just tell them okay. what it is? It, it's uh, the South African Women in Dialogue mm -hmm. that was initiated when Mrs. Mbeki was the First Lady. Mm -hmm. at, at that time, with politicians, but we were dealing with uh, NEPAD, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, in relation to the continental conflict. Okay. So in the DRC and Congo and things like that, we, women came here. And we engage with them and say to them, no, 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 workshop them. Why are the men taking decisions alone? Mm -hmm. So the women were workshopped and they went into the men and they said, sign the accord. Mm -hmm. Sign the agreement, sign whatever, because we are tired of the conflict. Mm -hmm. We are tired of the wars. We need to build. Sure. Because there is a resolution on the Security Council, mm. resolution 1325, which was initiated by women. And it's for peacekeeping, peace building and peacemaking. Because women are tired. They mm -hmm. need to be at the table to be party to making decisions. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got a larger number. Men are warmongers, women are peacemakers. Inshallah, Very I hope so. Me. <laughs> Most of the time we are finding that the men... But it's because we have the Rahma. We've got yeah. the extra dose of Because we need to keep mercy. the peace in the house. That's another program that we, mm -hmm. we need to uh, institute. We here. need mm -hmm. to keep Discuss. the peace in the house. Absolutely. Sometimes yeah. abusive relationship, no, but we true. will keep the peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you wonder how did our mother survive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, being so beaten and all the difficulties, making sure the food is, making sure the family survives, yep. not going. Because nowadays it's an epidemic that the whole question of talak, talak, talak kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because people are not prepared to work through it. I, I, I suppose it's this so-called mentality that, that society is based upon to according to patriarchal uh, mm -hmm. conditions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it comes with a, 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 mm -hmm. a mindset and a Condition. belief system to say that the main is a do dominant the one. Mm -hmm. So what he says, he's the general mm -hmm. and the underlings have to follow. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think this needs to change. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we need to learn this from Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he, he consulted, he believed in the Making mashura. Shura, mashura all the yes. time. And, you know, and with his wives and, and, that's uh, the thing. and public at large. Because yes. as much as <clears> we all say the man is the leader of the home, and you do need, you can't have many chiefs can't. Yes. Specific roles yeah. We all have our place. Yes. However, as a good leader, yeah. you consult. Mm -hmm. And if second in charge yeah. happens to be your yes. wife, which is a You're female, a good you need to consult. Yes. That's it. Yeah. So that's 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 you want, do you want yeah. and so you know? do you want yeah. leaders and humble leaders? Yeah, not to view of the topic too much. Mm -hmm. What else is out there? I mean, I have engaged with in South Africa and then um, NICSA, which is the National Interfaith Council yes. of South Africa. And there also there were certain experiences which again yeah. Opens your eyes, broadens your horizon. Um, I've gone on to the Interfaith Action Group for yes. Peace in Africa. And there you really learn diversity. to engage and you see the diversity of religious Very leaders much. coming together. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as we cherish our Islam as our truth, <coughs> as the yes. truth of, of, for, for humanity, mm -hmm. you come in there and now you have to be in control. You can't just be on a podium and preach what you want. Yeah, you need yeah. to have certain reservation. This is why I say we have to stretch into who who you are so that you don't offend people and chase yes. people away. Mm -hmm. So again, with these type of things, um, what can you share with us solution-wise? If we look at our country, there is so many programs that are in place. We just need to tap into it and make sure mm -hmm. that we understand mm -hmm. what is, because we are finding that People misunderstand and do not understand mm -hmm. their responsibility. And I, for one, as a Muslim, I see the Constitution is very clear for me. Individual responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether I want to do drugs or steal or murder and whatever, it's my responsibility, sure. it's not my family's. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not a whole society's family. That's why when my it son starts says with good the and individual. bad, it starts with you as an individual, so you have individual mm -hmm. choice. It's not dictated, so there's no compulsion in religion. Yes. Alhamdulillah, in that way I can relate. To the, there is chapter nines in the constitution, not just the IEC election commission, uh, agenda commission. There is also the culture, religion, and linguistic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that needs to be beefed up mm -hmm. for that interfaith, for that engagement. Mm -hmm. It at forces a level. you to overcome yeah. that yeah. racial. Because, you know, it's <clears> like <throat> when we say physical touch is important to a child, so too is that exposure yes. to people of 
diverse yes. uh, cultural, religious backgrounds because it teaches you how to behave towards them. You know, I, I, to be quite honest, I, I believe that it starts uh, at home. Mm -hmm. at but many a time the home is, is failing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why? Because mm -hmm. of the parents' baggage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is where now the... <clears throat> Our educational institutions, mm -hmm. the madrasas, the, the, the schools, Islamic mm -hmm. schools, other schools, mm -hmm. need to take responsibility mm -hmm. and, and condition the child according to the principles of Islam. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. And to make them non-racial, mm -hmm. whatever that might mean, mm -hmm. but not to see the skin, to see the texture, the, or the hair texture of, mm -hmm. of, a, of a fellow human being. I think this is very, very important. He might be getting the wrong message at home mm -hmm. or not the right guidance at mm -hmm. home, Mm -hmm. Now, the home front ladies groups mm -hmm. need to, uh, mm -hmm. I think, vigorously discuss this, bring it to the table to discuss. Yes. Don't keep it on the back burner or don't sweep it under the carpet. Mm -hmm. In the masjids, yes. the members, mm -hmm. exactly. the ulama need to now take responsibility. And I believe you, I'm not attacking the ulama. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're taking responsibility. No, because they, don't because they have control of the member. Yes. Mm -hmm. So speak of these issues mm -hmm. that concern the, us all. The relevant mm -hmm. issues and make sure that women are allowed mm -hmm. inside the masjid yes. where the imam it's doesn't the stand and say, I am not making a niya for women behind me. So women come to the masjid, mm -hmm. there's a little room, but they're not making with the jama mm -hmm. salah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. What sense does it make? You, you sort of we need misunderstanding. To, we need to grow up. What do they understand yeah. about exactly. the woman's role? You see, the interpretation is very narrow. Right. <clears throat> you know, we can sit and argue here. During the time of Nabi Karim Salah the audience was men and women. Yes. Mm -hmm. He spoke to all. And why are we not following that? You know? Yeah. So that are we not sunnah? following his sunnah? That's why I love going to Eastern Cape. I yes. mean, for other reasons, no, no, I don't like it. No, come to our Masjid Abu Bakr Siddiq. You live in totally Pretoria. Mixed. I mean, Lens. I go, to, I go to I go Come to Come and give a talk break. there, sister. We'll even allow you to give a lecture on pre Juma khutbah. I, I go to Clip Spray. Clip Spray. I'm comfortable yes. with the sisters there. It's not so far to drive Juma. I want to yeah. really engage and no, say No, there are Yala. progressive institutions mm. and progressive But in, in Lens... We need to engage we need to with engage. a larger community. But yeah. the... Our ulamas must come to the table. Look, they supposedly the leaders of mm -hmm. the of the ummah, mm -hmm. you know. So we need to take that responsibility. I don't know when our was there. They, uh, they have to do that. They must now change the mindset. Yeah, because you know what, uh, education so starts with unity. Yes. We don't need That's to very, sow dissent. Definitely. Let that. us make sure the ulama has one role in the day our, times, mm -hmm. returning our progress, building unity. Absolutely. Not causing division. Yeah. You see, this sister is another topic for another discussion, yes. but it's such an important topic very, because very. this is retarding our, it our is progress and defocusing us mm. as yes. well. Mm. You understand? So we have many, many challenges. It's a different form of apartheid yes. where you want to put the woman yes. down because there. They, women you, you don't and you know, know if the they understand apartheid in its totality, that it is totally against Islam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, racism is Totally, totally, totally. Uh, for I would say even Arab. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it it's it's it just is. not. It's just not on. It's not uh, part of me. And you see, for me, it is education starts in the lap of the mother. Yes. Why are you cutting the mothers off? Mm -hmm. You're making them as a lesser being, and unfortunately, it still happens <coughs> in many of our communities today. Yeah. So once again, we have to start seeing what can we do. And I mean. Programs like this, so we hope that it reaches into their hearts so Inshallah. that we can start making that positive change. And uh, a closing statement quickly from, bo from both of you. You know, uh, the two Fs, forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. Okay? Forgive most definitely. Mm -hmm. But not to forget. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we can learn from the past mistakes mm -hmm. and then change our ways. Can I quickly say something? Because what I've learned in my private practice is when we change the meaning of an experience in other words once we've discovered the wisdom the lesson mm -hmm. and we derive that the meaning changes it and does. the way we feel about it changes yes. that is why forgiveness comes easier we'll never forget no but if you can take that wisdom you out forget. your whole attitude True. you look at it as a lesson and you say thank you you were a lesson yes i'm taking the good out of it mm -hmm. sister if we don't change our attitudes to one another and see one another as a beauty of Allah Ta'ala's creation, mm. do not buy into the children's stories when the children says, I can choose my friends, I can't choose my family. Mm. Allah Ta'ala chose your family for you. Mm -hmm. Who has a better choice? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. Allah Ta'ala chose my parents for me. Mm -hmm. And my parents 
may not have had much in education as the formal, but what they've taught me, I can never forget. Mm -hmm. I can never forget because the values that was instilled. So it's our attitude towards looking back or glancing back and looking forward. Mm -hmm. Where to from here? Yeah. What, mm -hmm. what reality? Because we all create our own realities and future realities through the choices we make mm -hmm. in the present. And I'm going to just close off with the saying of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, do not belittle anyone or anything for the heart of every being desires the same. And we all know we desire acceptance, love, oh, honor, respect. Yeah. And with that, we have come to the end of today's program. I thank both the brother and the sister for joining me here today. Inshallah, we are going to start making waves and we're going to start making that change. Because if the change can start within us, because we've got the Quran, we've got yes. the truth. Yes. We've got a huge responsibility as Muslims to start following that sunnah, that hadith, the Quran, because we can change the world, but we need to start with self. Shukran jazeelan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.